prototype one catalog card on a typewriter. That was not even electronic, uh, electric, electric, not, not even. Some were, but not all. And then you, they, from this catalog card, they print six or eight or four, as you had decided in the, for the cataloging rules, more catalog cards. And then you, you had to type the different headings on top of it. Yeah? And uh, then it was filed afterwards. The filing was always handmade. In that time, especially in Germany, but I know it from other countries too, they had a lot of very big stacks and uh, even university libraries, uh, they had no open stacks. Uh, the first buildings in Germany were developed in the 70s, some very few in the 60s. Uh, so most, you had to go, uh, you had to use the catalog before you were able to get the book out of the stacks. You could not just uh, browse along uh, the, the stacks. And then uh, all the checkout was done with paper slips. So again, uh, as a job, you had to file the names, you had to file the books, uh, the titles, and uh, there were few exceptions. I myself studied, uh, I have studied Sinology, so my Chinese studies I did at Bochum University, and Bochum University at that time was a very new university. It was created in 66, and I entered there in 69. And uh, at that time, they were very, very advanced because they had uh, a card with, uh, I think, some holes, and these holes were connected to a mainframe. So when we checked our books, this card was used. So that was a very early way to have this, um, yes, uh, check out with using IT. Parallel, they were developing, especially in the 80s, they had um, uh, a few mainframes, but this was developing then in the 80s, and they were installed, and there were formats developed, and I can remember in my first IFNA in 1987, we have discussed uh, the Chinese format uh, for electronic cataloging, a lot, but it was only developed some years later and it came into action. And um, yes, we uh, had some dial-up databases, yeah, so with a phone and the dial to enter the database and yet you could see on, on the screen some data and sometimes you could find something, what you say, oh, there is more information and you got some text in that too. There was no internet, there was no web for us to use, there was something. But uh, and no email. So a paper, uh, uh, um, as IFLA, IFLA, the invitation to IFLA was sent out something in February for the August meeting and uh, if the president at that time visited countries so he stayed there for three weeks because even the airplanes were not going every week. Uh, so the, the time was still quite different. And uh, there was, but there was international lending, if you remember international lending was already installed, that was another international standard they tried to do, that they had this cooperation. And in international lending, uh, you send out uh, that you want to, to get some books and uh, some, or some journal articles and so. Uh, there were already copies, or they could get copies, and, uh, but fax was just in developing. So sometimes you could get something with fax, but they had, uh, they used a uh, lot telex, telex at that time. I don't know if you, anybody of you knows still what that was. Okay, so that was a development at that time in the 80s. And you can say as a result of change management, change management in all the libraries worldwide, you can say towards the 21st century, we come to today's libraries. And you can see a focus on technology and on organization. And what I want to show you, because I think it's very important if you talk later about the library of the future, um, that there is always an overlapping development. So as I told you from the Bochum University, that they had, had already this IT-based uh, checkout system, from that 
to know what we are going to have, or a lot of people have already, the RFID uh, checkout system, self-checkout. It's, it's a long, long way. And it's not that in all libraries it's at the same time. And during my time as um, president of IFLA, I came to a lot of countries, and a lot of, not countries, but libraries, where they still had uh, catalog cards. And uh, they also had their acquisition files. And they also, and many, many, uh, still have this uh, checkout uh, slips, paper slips to, to use. So it depends on, it depends on the size of the library, it depends on the possibility uh, they have. And we don't have to forget this, that on the way for development, we always have some who are coming later to it, but sometimes those latecomers, uh, they are better than when they change. Uh, to the new thing. So it's not always bad to be a late camera in something. <laughs> so there is at least a big gap between libraries worldwide and also between libraries in one society. So I can even tell you some not so advanced libraries in Berlin. Yeah? And I'm sure in your country you have the same and you know it. So this is one thing you should really uh, keep in mind that there is um, that, that uh, development is not straight in all libraries. Um, but what we as librarians and library associations, and especially <coughs> IFLA, uh, we want to do actions to close the gap. And if there is a lack of library systems and IT during that time to come to from the 18th to 2011, uh, there were a lot of development. And the first integrated library system which was free to distribute to, uh, to developing countries was from UNESCO. Uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you know this CDS ISIS, which was developed at that time. And now it's even going to be a web, uh, it's, it's even a web uh, format. But that, that takes time. So there is still a lack of library systems and IT in a lot of countries, and also with Building Strong Library Association, especially when we work together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, we are doing a lot of uh, supporting advocacy uh, to get IT installed in libraries. Because even in, in Berlin in the 90s, when I, I was in a special library and uh, my, the government uh, or the ministry was responsible for that library, they said, oh, the library don't, doesn't need this uh, IT in advance. We in the bureaus, we need it first. Yeah, so there is always, you have to always have some advocacy to be successful with this. Then there is the, the question of the electronic catalogue or the online catalogue. You can really see that in many countries when they came from the card catalogue to the electronic catalogue, they have not yet advanced to the web catalogue so that people can uh, use it from home and that they can order uh, or even uh, let's send some material to their home and all these activities like we have it now in Berlin, but which is not installed anywhere, and you have it in many countries, but you don't, in many cities, but you don't have it. And the universities are, are different, so you are more advanced than other libraries in, uh, in the country. You can see that. And uh, then the slow connectivity is a big problem, and there will be some, uh, I think even more uh, today, there is a session on uh, high speed, uh, connectivity for metropolitan libraries and it's uh, I think very important to have not such a slow connectivity but to get it uh, better and high speed and when I was during my time in IFLA and I can tell you all it's, it's really nice to be president of IFLA one day I came to Tahiti and uh, in Tahiti uh, I learned that there is uh, in the economy there is one family who has all the power for the connectivity of all that part of Polynesia. And they are not interested to make it quicker and to make, to make it faster uh, because they earn a lot of money out of the system how it is now. Uh, so you, you have to look at these things. Uh, there is always something in policy, there is always something in economic behind. And uh, I ask you really to, to look at this, uh, this background. And uh, email is, uh, was developed first, and then now uh, more and more there is web-based information. So you have these uh, groups where you work together on the web, uh, 
and sometimes that is even more effective than just if you send email to everybody and getting back and forth. So there is a change also in this. It's not so long as you think. Okay. <laughs> so the overlapping development you can see with ASCR, True and RDA. You can see it with the server architecture, the cloud computing, paper-based checkout, self-checkout, the stacks sorting by hand still, but there are a lot of automated stacks already. I saw great automated stacks in Japan, and uh, there. But I know there are a lot of other countries have uh, installed them too. You can see very nice ones also in Canada. Uh, train to use multimedia is one of the the aspects we have and uh, we have developed during that time. But what is now developing is train to create multimedia. Like in uh, in the digital library from uh, the National Library of Korea. Uh, they ask people to come there to do their own videos and they, they uh, support them how to do their videos or the musical library um, a musical library in uh, was it Canada I've seen and uh, where they, you can create your own music and you can create your digital version uh, from something in this uh, library so it's so important that we change the view uh, people look at us as uh, libraries and it has changed more. So it has changed the way we work, not only by IT, but also by uh, different structure and organizational structure. We have different organizational uh, charts. So the structure of our, uh, our libraries are different. Uh, and there is a change, but that is an own paper for itself. Uh, the qualification of staff is an, is an important, as you know, and that changed also. The customer services have changed a lot and the question of cooperation. Libraries are much more cooperating with other cultural entities or uh, social entities uh, than they have before. So they are much more going out to the society as they have before. So just let me tell you some of the basics of this kind of change management. Change happens in society through development. It just is going on. So, few people like change. Who likes it? Those who are creative, self-confident and cooperative. Those are the main people for change in your library. So, if you are like that, you are the one who could take part and push the change. And, in reality, if you think, and I thought the same, that there is a possibility to change towards something, that is not the real change. Change is always away from something. If you can't stand it anymore, if there is a danger to libraries, if, there, if everybody thinks there will be no librarian anymore in the future, then change is starting for everybody. Then it is something. But if you just think, oh, it would be nice to do this and this, it's much harder and you might not be successful. So, so keep that in mind. Change is always something to change away from from a bad situation to a better situation. There must be pressure. Without pressure, nobody will really change. Why? Because there are only 5%, maybe if it's very good, there are 20% pro-change, and they won't change. And there are always five, at least, maybe sometimes even more, 20, up to 20%, who are resisting change. But those in between, these are your colleagues who really don't care, really. Yeah? They are not into change and they are not refusing, but they are moving to the winning direction. And if those who are against change are winning, you have no chance to do the change in the library. But if you have people pro and you can win them for the change, explain them, put the pressure on it, then you have the chance to win. So what is tomorrow when you are 66? Or 64, I think. It's, sorry, 64. <laughs> Tomorrow, when you're 64. So there are the libraries of the future. And this meeting, and there are more meetings, like the 2020 uh, vision of IFLA, uh, which will discuss this future. So I won't explain it to you. But I can tell you it's a focus on services and on communication. And you see what has developed. And I just want to tell you, if you look what has developed, try to analyze what will be still there in the future. 
because there is this story of the e-book. Like my library, we have uh, we had e-books. I think it was the year 2000 or something, or 2002, when there was the first e-book on the market, and we uh, we want to give it to people and lend. But there was no content really, so it doesn't function. And now, now e-book is there. So you can see it. So if you are too early, you are not successful. Yeah? But nevertheless, it's not bad to try it. Yeah? So keep in mind the overlapping development. That is very important. And keep in mind what is in and what will be out soon. So there are some questions to the library of the future. What form of content knowledge will be out there? Will we still store it? How will we provide access to it? How will we organize it? What else will we provide? Will we train people to access knowledge? Will the library still provide access to knowledge? Will it be a virtual library only? Any librarians left? These are the questions for your generation. I'm so happy that I don't have to follow that. <laughs> so, but I believe the library of the future is a library to go. To go to and to go. Thank you.